Today on the bench, we have an item from the mailbag, the Ring Video Doorbell Pro. And the Pro differentiates it from the original Ring Doorbell with a pair of terminals to connect to your existing doorbell wiring to get power. So, no battery required. And then it'll hook this up to a traditional old-time electric doorbell and then look at a problem you could encounter if you have a newer electronic door chime. So let's see how this electric doorbell circuit typically works. You have a 16 volt output AC transformer right here. One line connects up to the common connection on the door chime, the electric doorbell itself, and then the uh, other connects to the doorbell button, and the button connects back to the bell itself. Closing the, uh, pressing the button closes the circuit, causes the solenoid to energize, that moves a plunger, and it can swing back and forth to hit one or two different chimes, giving you a dual tone or single tone sound. And to show that, I've picked up the, from Home Depot, the lowest of the low in the way of uh, doorbells, and this is the, their contractor kit. If your contractor installs this, fire him, find somebody better. Um, because this is pretty low end, but it does work for this demonstration. So here we have a basic doorbell, and here are the solenoids that swing back and forth depending on uh, whether you're going with one or two tone. And the common, one, one of the AC lines is coming into this common central terminal, and here we have the back door single tone chime terminal that would normally run to one of these really low-end buttons that came with it. And by low-end, wow, uh, bent metal with some sort of uh, plating on it, maybe to give it a little bit of weather protection. But it did also have one of the buttons ha is lighted, and it has this little lamp in it to allow the button to glow at night. You can see that it's drawing 0.045, uh, we'll call it milliamps, so 45 milliamps. And that's about... It's over half a watt. It's probably closer to three quarters of a watt. So quite a bit of power. And if, if you see, I've got the meter connected between this terminal and here. So this lamp is pulling power through the solenoid, but yet the doorbell doesn't ring. That's because the solenoid at this point can't fully energize, and therefore it's just acting like a big wire round wound resistor. Um, but if we bypass that and we were to press the button, we can see that we get a big current spike uh, through the doorbell. In fact, let's check the max. Okay, 1.1 uh, amps, so over an amp of power goes through it in order to ring the chime. <clears throat> now let's take a look at uh, the, how the uh, Ring Pro hooks into this circuit. So the Ring doorbell it's hooked up the same way, except we've replaced the button with the ring and its two wires to our connection. We've also had to add one more thing, this power module that comes with it. It's a little hard to get a good shot of that. This is the Ring Pro Power Kit version 2. Um, it's basically just a power resistor that is connected across the pins, the terminals of the doorbell, to uh, allow more power through to the Ring Pro, because the Ring Pro needs more power than this, uh, enough, the Ring Pro needs enough power that it would actually cause the doorbell to ring. So we don't want that, so they give you this in order to connect up across it. And then that'll bypass most of the power. Instead of flowing through the solenoid, it'll flow through here. So let's power up the ring doorbell. So I've got the power coming out of the transformer. One terminal connected, one of connection from that to the common on the doorbell. The other is jumpered with a wire nut out to the ring pro. Instead of hooking the Ring Pro up directly to the other terminal, let's take a look at its current consumption. Let's power this thing up. Oh, 
All right. Right now it's just taking 90 milliamps, 100 milliamps. Let's give it a moment and let it fully cycle. So the Ring Pro is fully powered up. Let's give it a test. And let's look at how much current it uses. Let's get the maximum current. So it's ringing and bang, there's a nice one amp spike of current. We can even answer the uh, answer this and I can get it to uh, show up here. Here we go. We have a nice picture of the bench and everything's working. So just what I want. Now the uh, notice that it uh, provided a nice one amp spike and that's great 1.1 amps that's what uh, this needed so this basically just goes dead short uh, when it needs to uh, cause the in, the existing doorbell to ring now let's take a look at what's going on with an electronic doorbell typically those do not have well those will not have these big solenoids in fact they're just a bunch of little transistor circuits they need very little power they'll play a nice melody they might be built into an intercom system like this one so in this new tone system, it doesn't even provide the 16 volts AC out. It provides a few volts, enough to light the uh, little lamp and a doorbell button, and that's really it. So I can't just hook this up to my existing wiring. I'm going to have to power this separately and then figure out how to, um, how to, how to get it to trigger that existing electronic chime while not uh, sending 16 volts AC into what is a DC input. Here we have replaced the doorbell with a terminal strip and an AC relay. So it's wired up pretty much the same as before. We have our transformer. The power, one of the eight power wires comes in and goes out to the ring doorbell. That connection comes back to this terminal and the other power AC line comes in to this terminal just like on the doorbell. Again, like on the doorbell, we've taken the Ring uh, Power Pro kit and connected it across those same terminals that were on the doorbell. We have replaced the solenoid under inside that with this AC relay. So these two purple wires connect out to the AC relay. Because it's, it doesn't make much noise, I have connected a small buzzer across the terminal, uh, across the uh, relay contacts, and uh, in an with an electronic door chime, this would instead be the terminals you would connect to uh, to ring your the chime in your intercom system or your other other electronic doorbell. Now, um, this relay is this one right here not very expensive and seems to be fairly decent I like that it was on a DIN rail mount um, that'll be handy for me when I install it I think uh, note that it is a 24 volt AC relay and we were working with 16 volts before so I have replaced the power transformer with this 24 volt 40 VA transformer this one right here, it's an Elk brand. I've used these before in uh, alarm panels. And uh, the last one I installed uh, ran for, well, it was, go it was running for about 15 years. And I uh, went and it was working fine when I last serviced that system back in 2015. So uh, yeah, these are fairly durable. This one looks, I can't tell if it's dirty or maybe it was used or, or bad manufacturer. Um, yeah, not too impressed with the supplier of this, but it seems to work just fine. So let's power this up and see how it all works. And there can be some, I noticed some interesting anomalies when uh, powering this up. So here we go. Yeah. So 
So the AC relay is triggered continuously as this thing is booting up. So that's a bit of a problem. And now that this has uh, passed its peak current uh, consumption, the relay has opened up. Now, that's of course only going to happen when you're powering this up and whatever you're powering can have connected this to, like your electronic door chime, is probably also just powering up, like the intercom system or whatever. So you may not hear the doorbell ringing during that time. Looks like the uh, ring doorbell has powered up and is ready to go. So let's just watch the uh, current go by. Instead of uh, running straight to the relay, I have inserted this meter in place. So here we go. All right. So it took 0 .8, 0 .08 amps, so 81 uh, milliamps. That's not bad. That's fairly reasonable con current consumption. And uh, it seems to work fine. So I think this will be a, a decent solution. Now all I've got to do is get this mounted to uh, into an, my uh, panel down here in the basement, get power hooked up to it, uh, reroute uh, some of the connections that I have uh, to where this is wired up. This is going to be uh, replacing a, a camera that's installed next to the door. And so I've already got Cat5 running to that. So this will be a simple enough uh, connection up there but I do have to hook in the uh, transformer and then install the relay and uh, patch it into some wires that go up to the intercom system. Now here's the circuit of what we just talked about. We have the transformer just as before and the ring doorbell. Power going through, power module providing most of the current and then the relay and the contacts connected out to the doorbell. I've actually shown this across the incorrect set of contacts. You'll want it across the normally open contact, not the normally closed contact. The sound quality may be a little different since we're using the camera's internal microphone, but I wanted to go over the difference uh, that I failed to point out uh, was that I said I was using an AC relay, and it says 24 volts AC on the coil. Oh, a little hard to get that to to pick up. We're right there. That's different than the usual uh, DC relay. Uh, they look basically the same and the price is well, probably typically about the same. The AC ones may be a little bit more but they are different. So with our simple transfor AC transformer hooked up we'll apply power to the AC relay and it works just fine. Uh, no problems at all handling the AC current which is cycling uh, at uh, 60 Hertz so it's crossing the uh, zero voltage point 120 times per second and yet the uh, relay is very stable. Now let's connect that to a DC relay. Sometimes it kind of catches but a lot of the time it just chatters. And I wanted to make sure that audio came through uh, and it wouldn't normally come through very well on my uh, headset. But that is the difference between the uh, in the behavior of an AC versus a DC relay. So applying AC to one of these DC relays just isn't going to work very well. Very difficult to see it. The difference is I believe on this one, this is the shaded pole part, and you'll see a tiny, tiny copper plate staved across the uh, core of this. And in here, we just see the, the steel or iron core going straight through. And what that does is it creates what's called a shaded pole or rather a, a shaded part of the inductor and that is, what that does is it uh, takes mm, part of the magnetic field, it dampens part of the magnetic field and, or def delays it so that it's out of phase with the uh, magnetic flux and the rest of the core and therefore this still has some magnetic 
uh, traction to the plate on the relay, contactor in the relay, as it crosses the zero point. At least that's my understanding of it. I've never really worried about uh, the shading of magnetic cores for AC uh, components. Trying to hold a camera and uh, do all this work, and I didn't have a good place uh, to put the tripod and get a decent shot of it. So I'm just going to voice over and uh, do some stills and show you what all I was doing. Well, it's all installed and ready to power up. The wiring behind the intercom panel is a bit of a mess. As things have been replaced, it has evolved over the... Uh, you can see the electronic chime board is on the left side. Here we have the old push-button wires connected to the chime module. When installing a bunch of Ethernet ports, probably 15 years ago, I ran a couple of uh, connections to the intercom panel on the off chance that they might be useful. Here's the old camera and uh, the existing doorbell button below it. After eight years of south-facing sunlight, it's seen better days. We'll see how the ring holds up to the same torture. The old camera was recessed, so there's a nice big hole making the wiring. The ring comes with a pair of leads to splice onto existing wiring, and those came in handy. I have used two pairs of the Cat5 cable for each uh, connection to reduce the voltage drop from the transformer. Here's the ring mounted up. It's about 8 p.m. and the sunlight is fading. Now, back at the intercom unit, I have connected the blue pair from the Cat5 up to the same terminals. Down in the networking panel, I just screwed the terminal strip and relay directly into the panel and didn't worry about DIN rail. I spliced the existing orange and white connections onto the Cat5 that runs to the Ring Pro and used the same white twisted pair from the demonstration to run out to the transformer. And the panel is all tidied up, ready to power up the Ring. Right now I'm recording the audio inside the house. Let's try it out. And that's the Corgi Accompaniment. And that's the Ring Pro Video Doorbell and how to connect it to an electronic door chime. I hope that was useful.